I have recently participated in Bileli's contest with this artwork and today I'm going to teach you how to do it too. As I always do, I start with a background picture and in this case I was interested in the top area which is the sky part. And then on top of it I wanted to add a strange planet and because the blending mode now is set to normal, I switch it to screen. And then I have added a mask and mask the bottom area. And then for the ground part, for foreground part, I have added uh, this uh, picture and I have uh, added a mask and kept only the area that I was interested in. That means only this area. And then I didn't want to keep this uh, part like that with the grass and all. And I decided to go with this picture. So I used this picture, I drag it here. And I press Ctrl T, Hold Shift to add a perspective. So hold Shift and drag the top area and then right click on the image and choose perspective. And I have dragged the corners to the right and then I place it on the bottom area and I have added a mask here on the top. I have added a mask and I try to blend it better with the rest of the image that I have over there with the grass because uh, the original grass, uh, the original picture with the grass had different colors than this one with the rock part. I have added a selective color where I have decreased the science and then with the brightness and contrast I have increased a bit the brightness and a lot the contrast and now they match better together. Then it's the moment to add the skulls. If you're wondering why I joined this contest, the reason is that Bilelis is one of the best 3D illustrators and digital artists in the world. He's focused in dark visuals and decorative art and because I don't really do 3D art, I was amazed by the quality of the artist that joined this contest that he recently organized on Twitter where we had to use this call that he created and we had the freedom to do whatever we want with it. Now let's go back to our video. So this uh, was an amazing image provided by uh, Bilelis for his contest and I wanted to use it uh, here into my design and uh, I really didn't like the, the neck area and because I wanted to have the neck a bit longer I decided to copy a portion of this uh, skull so with the marquee tool I selected uh, this part of the neck and I press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to paste it so I have this one uh, on a different layer and then I went here on the top and I chose counter aware scale and this will help me if I uh, decide to make this one bigger to keep as much as Photoshop can from the original pixels so you see now if I make it bigger it uh, keeps a lot of the details so in our case hold shift and drag the bottom area and this way I'm preserving a lot of the details from the image that I just modified and then I'm going to drag this one underneath and um, already it starts to look good. Uh, with a mask, I mask uh, a bit of the original skull and I drag this one a bit to the top to match better the skull. And then press Ctrl T, right click on the image and with the warp tool, I have moved a bit the left and the right side of uh, the neck. And um, then I added a mask and try to blend it uh, better with the background with the grass. So with uh, a grass brush I just painted and I tried to you know uh, blend it better with the rest of the background. Because I thought that uh, this is not enough, it's uh, is really simple, I decided to place other skulls uh, here next to the original one. So I place this one which I have from Envato, it's a 3D, you can rotate it on the website and also is the same one but it's uh, rotated to the other side. And of course uh, they needed some color changes. And the first one that I used was hue and saturation and I have changed the colors of the grace uh, area and then I have changed that uh, cyan uh, color to this uh, rusty color rusty red color again with the uh, hue and saturation and then on top of uh, everything I have added a selective color and the layer was set instead of normal to color and I have played a bit with the neutrals and changed that uh, rusty red color to this uh, orangey color. And then with the brightness and contrast, I have increased the contrast a lot and decreased the brightness. 
because uh, the Bileli skull was something like a gold here on the skull part, I have added uh, another hue and saturation and I try to keep uh, a bit of that uh, color to the skulls that I added after. And then I have placed uh, both skulls, so the left and right, I have placed them into one single group and to this group I have added uh, more shadows by using the soft light. So if you uh, haven't tried this method before, you create a new layer and you set the blending mode to soft light and don't forget to fill it with 50% grey. And now if you use the brush tool and the black color, choose a lower flow, something like uh, around 10% and if you use the black color and the brush as I said and you paint on the image you will see that those parts will darken up a lot and that will help me to add more shadows and to help the highlights later on to be more visible. If you saw my other videos on this channel you know that I use the linear dodge for the highlights. Talking about my channel, if you found any value until now on this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Coming back to this uh, artwork and uh, we were talking about the highlights, let's create the highlights uh, by going to layer, new layer and here choose the blending mode linear dodge and fill it with black. And now because we have some pinkish uh, orangey color behind as I'm going to select with the brush tool this color from the sky area and I'm going to paint on the sides of those skulls and um, I paint it like that for the first time and then double click on the layer and hold alt and drag this slider more to the right and that will help us to disperse that uh, orangey pinkish color a lot so that was the first step and then on top of it I have painted uh, with a white uh, color to add more highlights. So I did the same, the same step with the layer set to linear dodge and fill it with black but this time I haven't used the blend if. So with the brush tool selected let's choose a color from the sky so this really really bright uh, let's say uh, pink I have uh, zoomed in and I have painted slowly on the margins of our skull and inside some areas uh, around uh, those parts where the lights that uh, came from behind touched uh, our uh, skull. So those were the highlights that I have added with the linear dodge and on top of them in front of them actually I have added some uh, fog, some uh, let's say clouds and if you look now they look uh, much better blended with the background so um, you add a new layer and you take uh, something like a cloudy brush you make it uh, bigger let's sample a color from here let's say this one and now if I paint you'll see that it will add a bit of that color on top of our skulls and that help us to add more realism to our image and going back to the left and right skulls to the side skulls um, I have added some blur to them because they are behind so first thing that I have added is a Gaussian blur to both of them so actually I have added a one pixel not too much Gaussian blur if you don't know where is the Gaussian blur go to filter and here on the blur part choose Gaussian blur and choose one pixel and then I have placed everything into one single group so all the skulls are into one single group and then behind them I have added uh, like a bright uh, source of light by using a color dodge layer. So create like that from the top a new layer and this time use color dodge and fill it with black. And now with the same cloudy brush I'm going to select uh, this color from the background and now if I start to paint you'll see that uh, the area behind them will, will brighten up a lot and this is really nice if you want to add more lightness to your image of course this is uh, kind of too much so you can switch always to the black color and if you paint back it will uh, take away that uh, really powerful uh, color that uh, we just painted. So. To the group of skulls I have added a photo filter so now they look all together much much better and I have used this uh, color and then with uh, the soft light method that I just show you on how to add more shadows I have added more shadows to the top uh, skull and with a selective color with the layer set to color I have increased uh, the magenta and decreased the science. 
I wanted to darken up a bit everything so uh, I have darkened up the main skull, the main skull area by using a brightness and contrast where I have decreased the brightness and increased the contrast. And then on this uh, main skull I have added a bit of uh, highlights but not too much because uh, it is covered by the other skulls and it doesn't really have that much light cast on it. And then on top of everything I have added again that uh, fog, that mist uh, to cover them uh, much better with the background but on Tori it's not uh, finished yet because in front of them we need to add uh, some mountains because that will help the integration with the background much much more. On the bottom area I have added uh, only on this part of the neck I have decreased the brightness a lot because uh, I wanted to have more shadows over there so uh, now is the moment to add the rocks I have added uh, some rocks left and right. I have used uh, this picture where I have uh, mask only the rock part and I have uh, used it uh, here. So this is uh, the image that I have used and rotated and then I did the same thing to the other side. Basically is the same image but uh, rotated to the other side and I have added a mask and mask those areas. And now what we need to do is to match the colors of our rocks with the rest of the background image. So for that I have used a curves where I have used the auto function. So on my latest uh, tips and tricks uh, video on this channel I showed you how to use the auto function, the auto function of uh, curves to match the colors. And on top I have added a selective color again where I have decreased a bit the science. So this is what we have so far and in front of the mountains I have added more fog and now our skulls uh, look uh, much better integrated with the background. And because uh, I thought that uh, this is not enough for that contest I decided to add this monk in front of the skulls. So I took the object selection tool selected a rectangle around him, I pressed uh, the mask, so now we have our selection ready and drag our monk and I have moved uh, him around uh, and uh, flip it uh, horizontally and uh, I have added a shadow beneath him. So to add this shadow, this type of shadow, there are many ways but the one that I use here is by using multiply. Sometimes I use uh, exposure but let me explain you how I use this multiply. So um, I created a new layer and let's call this one shadow and um, set the blending mode to multiply. Then so hold control and click on the mask but be sure that you have selected the shadow layer and then take the paint bucket tool hold alt and select a brownish color from the background let's say this one and you feel that uh, selection you'll see it like that and then press ctrl t right click and flip it vertically i dragged it underneath and then by holding uh, ctrl i dragged the corners to add a perspective to my shadow so something uh, something like that of course you should uh, play more with uh, this area if uh, you you are not satisfied with the angles that we you have you should uh, use the puppet warp so go to edit and then choose puppet warp so if you don't see the edit points uh, i don't know photoshop sometimes hide them hides them you should go to view show and then uh, mesh and here just add some points that won't move so basically the first points that you add uh, will help uh, Photoshop not to move those areas and then if I click here and drag it will drag uh, that shadow where I want and of course I don't like this area so I'm going to drag it underneath and you can play around and uh, you know drag uh, this by using uh, this warp and then hit OK and now I'm going to add a blur so go to filter blur and motion blur and let's choose this almost the same angle and increase a bit the distance hit ok add a mask and now i'm going to use the soft brown the soft round brush and with the black color and the flow around 10 percent if i paint i will take away 
some parts of uh, that uh, shadow so this is uh, my shadow and of course now we need to match uh, his colors with the rest of the background first thing that i did here was to decrease the lightness and i have used the curves and i have decrease the brightness then with the hue and saturation i have changed the colors and then with an exposure i have added some highlights on this area let me show you go to the adjustment layers use exposure increase the exposure double click on the layer and uh, hold alt to add a blend diff and drag it a bit to the right and then hit ok and now go on the mask press ctrl and i to invert it and now with the same soft brush so for round brush with a white color if you paint on the sides you'll see that you'll add some really interesting uh, highlights on that area where you paint with the white color then with another hue and saturation i have changed the colors of uh, his clothing and with uh, curves then i have changed the overall colors to match the background by using the auto function and then with the highlights i have painted a bit on uh, his left side not too much by using that method with the linear dodge and now i wanted to have uh, this bottom area more uh, darker so i have added the brightness and contrast and kept this part uh, darker and the rest of the image i really didn't do anything and then I wanted to have some shadows that were casted uh, by the skulls and now as I said uh, that I'm not always use the multiply for shadows I sometimes use exposure so this time I use exposure and added the shadows for the skulls. Let me show you how I selected all the skulls because there are three different layers and I have made one single selection. On the skulls part we have uh, those three layers so uh, I hold ctrl and click and he selected the right one then i continue to hold ctrl but this time i'm holding shift also and i have click on the other one and at the end i have click on the main one and on the neck part and this is how i selected everything by holding ctrl and then shift and now i'm going to the exposure and if you look here on the right on the mask part you see that we have that selection and now if i decrease the exposure it will decrease uh, the lightness and now the same thing press ctrl t right click on the image flip it vertically and if you drag it you'll see that it will drag that exposure uh, underneath and with the ctrl pressed i tried to add something like uh, an angle like a perspective to that shadow and now by using a layer set to overlay i have increased a bit the lights that were cast and now we have a really bright uh, brighter area with uh, the lights that come from behind so um, you create a new layer and you set it to overlay and now with the brush tool and this uh, we we sampled a color by using uh, the alt hold alt and click and sample this color from the sky and now if we paint on some areas you'll see that they will brighten up uh, where we paint with uh, that layer set to overlay so and then on the right side i have added some birds and now is the time for the camera row filter so press ctrl r shift and i then right click and convert it to a smart object then go to filter and here choose camera row filter on the camera row filter those were the settings that i have used as I always say you can play around with uh, this area and choose your own settings if you want but if you want to see what I have used those are the settings and uh, here on the detail I always add sharpening noise reduction and color noise reduction and of course at the end the grain helps a lot to gather all the elements together and uh, that grain area helps this uh, matching of the objects uh, much much better so and then press ok As you know, if you want to have your work featured in my videos, use the tag Mr23Review whenever you post your art on Instagram. So for this week feature artists, I choose the design by Freya Forestfy with this amazing uh, magic horse uh, Patronus design and I was really impressed by the final result. For that, don't forget to check out her Instagram page also and to give her a follow. You won't regret it because she has a lot of interesting things on her page. And congrats again Freya for being the featured artist of this week. 
I did not win Bileli's contest, but I won a lot of fun and experience while I was doing this design. So if you want to evolve also, watching this video is not enough. Don't forget to check out my previous videos where I explain in more details my techniques. I am Mr. 23, see you next time.